Excellent. So welcome all to this e-business in tourism final uh, lecture on trends and future. We've traveled the history and the presence of uh, e-business in tourism quite extensively. And now it's time to take a little quick uh, um, peek in, in, into the future, what might be happening. Uh, and what will probably happen. This is a nice start. Five ways the hotel of the future is already here. The technology is developing so fast now that it's hard to keep track of what is happening uh, all over the world. There's new applications, new things uh, done every day. We have voice activated rooms. We have robots that greet you at the door and bring you champagne. We have virtual reality, uh, rainforest on the roof and beach in the sky, and whatever you have. Basically, we are starting to approach a point where only our limitation uh, is our uh, mind, our imagination. Around a year, year and a half ago, first completely robot-operated hotel was opened in Nagasaki. No one had a fantastic idea of putting a dinosaur as a front desk robot, but hey, that works for me. Welcome. Welcome to the Hidnell Hotel. If you want to check in, please press 1. If you want to check out, please press the check out on the right of the touch panel. At least it's not hurrying too much. <laughs> but at least you don't have to worry if you have to tip him or not. And this is especially that it's it's a cheap hotel because it doesn't have any salaries that it has to pay. The idea of a robot hotel might still be a bit exotic for you, but again, technology develops, robots get better and better. At which point does it stop being such a silly idea? Yes, uh, Tito says that Pepper the robot is now being tested in Finland too, in nursing homes, I think. Definitely, yeah. And then there are these little seal robots for nursing homes and, and so on. So definitely robot technology is one of those things that's really um, fast becoming a reality. Uh, getting better and better really fast. Predicting future is always extremely difficult. As, as we saw from the beginning uh, slide, Cardinal made a terrible mistake when they uh, uh, predicted no, uh, Microsoft operating system would have a 25% market share during this year. It happens, uh, especially because the rate of growth uh, in modern world is so high and it, it's, it feeds itself. It's, in some, some cases it is almost exponential, but Basically, we cannot have exponential growth because that would end up in, 
in infinity and that's basically impossible. Especially in tourism, we are also talking about people. This is heavily people-intensive industry. It's from people to the people. Um, uh, tourists uh, travel the world and are looking for unique experiences, looking for great customer service, uh, making irrational decisions, making their choices. So it uh, adds a layer of uh, difficulty to predicting what will happen. And experts also fail in their predictions. And, and it's, it's known that we tend to, uh, we tend to um, underestimate the technological development in the long... Uh, in underestimate in, in the uh, short run and overestimate in the long run what will happen. And this is, this is funny, which uh, brings us back a few years to what people in 1899 thought would happen to travel technology in, in the um, uh, World Expo in 1900. We would have um, airborne taxis everywhere in, in, in 2000, not quite there yet. Um, uh, holiday rentals, hotels and bed and breakfast motels all on the road. Well, we don't have uh, that many hotels on the road, but we have caravans, so that, that's almost equal to that. Cruise industry, um, it's not uh, that close to, to Mother Nature. And everything they do are do it done in different kind of environments. But this just uh, is an example of how we base what we think will happen in the future to what is happening now, what we are doing now. And the future will be completely different. And you can see this, for example, when you are looking at Arthur C. Clarke, uh, reading Arthur C. Clarke's books, uh, Dawn on Mars, and, and, and uh, similar ones that were... Sci-fi has actually, sci-fi that was written in the 30s is now old technology in modern world. So the technology has developed very fast in, 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 uh, during the past few decades. But there are some megatrends that are affecting tourism industry, tourism business, and that you should be aware of. Economic center of Earth is moving towards Asia from Europe. It was before the First World War. It was very centered in Europe. Then started moving towards America, and now it's moving towards Asia. Uh, more and more people travel. Upper classes travel more, but also middle classes travel more. Travel is one of these very few industries that have constant growth predicted for unforeseen future. Uh, we are starting, hopefully at least, to appreciate the environment more, looking and making more conscious choices about how, how uh, our travel affects the environment, affects nature, affects local cultures and people and, and everything. And this is probably something that we will be seeing in online marketing much more, something that's not very much used yet or is just in the children's board, uh, books about how, how environmentally friendly opinions can be used in marketing of a tourism product and destination. Safety and terrorism, huge topics in modern world. Finland is the safest destination, the safest country in the world. How are we from using that to promote our country? For, for international markets. Demand for luxury, especially coming from Asia. Um, and luxury is also a huge interest here in Finland because what we have in our tourism field, what we offer as a tourism service, we, we cannot compete with price. So we have to compete with quality. And our focus should be in luxury. Our, what the tourism products, for example, what Lakeland and Eastern Finland are selling are definitely a luxury product for people coming from Asia, for example. 
and of course the aging population and what it how it affects and it has huge effects on on e business and channels we use and everything we do these are from 2008 but they are mega trends they are not going away anytime soon we are talking about smartphones smart for uh, cities uh, smart television smart tourism and, and and so but we are more moving towards a lot more intelligent systems systems that think by themselves not just work according to algorithms or predefined rules uh, systems that learn more and more using neural networks and, and similar technologies they can develop their own algorithms and, and uh, make their own decisions and uh, analyze huge amount of data uh, in very short time and make good decisions based on that data I already showed you some uh, Google Translate things, game of, gamification mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. and one of the huge new things coming up is the Internet of Things that will have huge. By now, on you may have heard the term Internet of Things. Sounds interesting, but what does the Internet of Things actually mean? IoT is an evolution of mobile, home, and embedded applications that are being connected to the Internet, integrating greater compute capabilities, and using data analytics to extract meaningful information. Billions of devices will be connected to the Internet, and soon, hundreds of billions of devices. As related devices connect with each other, they can become an intelligent system of systems. And when these intelligent devices and systems of systems share data over the cloud and analyze it, they can transform our businesses, our lives, and our world in countless ways. Whether it's improving medical outcomes, creating better products faster with lower development costs, making shopping more enjoyable, or optimizing energy generation and consumption. Here's an example of the big picture. Imagine an intelligent device such as a smart traffic camera. The camera can monitor the road for congestion, accidents, and weather conditions, and communicate that status to a gateway that combines it with data from other cameras, creating an intelligent citywide traffic system. Now, imagine that intelligent traffic system connected to other citywide transportation systems, which get data from their own intelligent devices, creating an ever larger intelligent system of systems. The really big possibilities come from analyzing the end-to-end -end data across that system of systems. For example, let's say the city's intelligent traffic system detects massive congestion due to an accident. That insight can be sent to the citywide transportation system, which can analyze the accident's impact on other city systems. Recognizing the accident is near the airport and two city schools, it could notify those systems so they can adjust flight and school schedules. It can also analyze and derive optimal routes around the accident and send those instructions to the city's digital signage system to guide drivers around the accident. And that's just one example of the potential benefits that can happen when intelligent devices share insight with other systems, forming ever-expanding systems of systems. But how do we get there? Regardless of the solution, Intel processors are designed to help you get to market. Internet of Things will increase the number of devices connected to Internet in the next few years by dozenfold, tenfold. Huge amount of new devices connected to Internet not just our refrigerators, but new kind of sensors, new kind of devices that have unprecedented possibilities to collect data, to uh, relay information, to show so things uh, what is to come. Uh, for travel and tourism, there was some really good examples already in that, that video, but the, the, we are just in the very beginning of thinking what Internet of Things actually means for, for tourism. But more and more uh, devices, more and more objects will have uh, intelligence, will have connection to Internet, will have sensors that we can, uh, and, and we can connect to. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Be a doll and get your mother a large poor cheese from... Virtual Canada. reality has been discussed for a very long time. 
but we are now finally reaching a very um, point that these virtual realities are becoming super realistic. That they are being, um, they can be messed up with the real world almost. And this is just, we are now experiencing the first generation of uh, modern virtual reality. The next generation will be twice as good, and the next twice as good than that. So this technology will also be a lot better in really short time. Will become much more realistic, if it even needs to be much more realistic than this. And if you have a chance, if you live, for example, in Helsinki, you should definitely, you should definitely go and visit the digital expo at the at the Helsinki. Messukeskus Fair Center this uh, weekend. I think it is this weekend, I, I trust so. There's many opportunities for you to try out these classes and, and please do, they are fantastic. This is the last one. Yeah, I, I, I just encountered a video where a person was using these glasses to play a game where they climbed a mountain and when he fell, he really fell and that was huge. But as Samsa says, dystopia of this is Skynet, yes. There's more and more discussion about artificial intelligence and what we should do about it. Because one possibility, that one real possibility is actually Skynet, that there becomes... Uh, an independent artificial intelligence that is hostile to humans. That is not any more science fiction, but that is actually something that real scientists are now talking about, which just demonstrates how much technology is developing all the time. And how much technology is developing is this uh, magic leap. This is definitely something that you should keep in mind. It's a new kind of, kind of like Google Classes, but taking everything one step further, making your whole world virtual. This is one of the most secretive companies in technology at this moment. Uh, it's worth billions of dollars already and no one basically, well, only a few have seen this actual product. They have great videos, what it is, but no one actually knows what's coming and everybody's waiting with the, uh, everybody's excited to, to see what is coming. Microsoft has a very similar system, but this is actually um, already an existing system that you can you can use. You can buy this for five thousand dollars now. We also have this custom camera that can see a full view of every hologram. So basically, holograms in your world. 
those kind of glasses. To interact with the environment around you. And I'm, I'm just but waiting today, for the day when we want to all of us are walking in the street just wearing one those kind of glasses. Or maybe a little bit smaller, but some kind of virtual reality glasses in any case. This holographic gauntlet is the weapon that Dan will be using while playing Project X-Ray. And, and you can really, there's robots. much more opportunities for this kind of technology than just playing these stupid silly games like, like this one and the previous one. They can be used for uh, designing new houses, uh, virtual worlds, tourism products, tourism experiences everything so it's um, we are really moving into interesting new venues also in tourism research and talking about translations we have this this is already quite far fetched technology but very similar to what we uh, when put this in here. already saw Je mets ça dans mon oreille. Put it in your ear. Comme ça? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me in French? Avez-vous oui, mieux entendre en français? Ah, oui! <laughs> <laughs> Et je peux, te, je peux entendre parler français? <laughs> These are actual consumer products that would have been like science fiction for 10 years ago or like Douglas Adams wrote in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy about the small fish, fable fish, which is basically something that you stick to your ear and it translates everything you hear. And this is exactly the same thing. And this is a, something that I, I uh, like to do is to update this. So I've been uh, having these technologies that are coming uh, by my, my own account, my own uh, uh, listing about when they are coming. Intelligent software agents, we are talking about, uh, let's say, we already have those. But when we are talking about it's uh, maybe we, well, Google Assistant could, is basically this, but it's still not in, 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 in enough level, good level to be accounted. So, but maybe two years and Google Assistant will be quite good. No platform limitations, so all the technologies would work together. Well, that's still far, far ahead. Semantic Web, probably, um, I have no idea what's going on with Semantic Web. Everybody stopped talking about it. That was a huge big step five years ago that all the objects could have uh, semanticism built within them, but no one is talking about it anymore, so that's a huge question mark. Maybe the web is already semantic, but I don't think so. Increasing speed of data, for sure. Infrastructure, 5G will be somewhere around 2020. New business models come all the time. Uh, dynamic packaging, so you can make... Uh, uh, I, I would say the DMO uh, service with um, with that kind of DMO service where you can buy everything you see, that would be a good example of dynamic packaging. Um, I I would say that that's we could do that, but I haven't seen one. So technology exists, but uh, it hasn't been applied, or I don't know if it has been applied somewhere maybe it has no technology already here technology everywhere e or the maybe five years virtual reality already here leapfrogging for third world countries this is what we see that for some third world countries they are already using mobile banking more than we in western countries they are using mobile payments more than people in western countries they have take the technologies we use and taking them to to next level big data already here cryptocurrency like bitcoin uh, already here um, uh, but it's technologically viable but 
not accepted by society and banking system just yet. But it will it is moving towards blockchain technology, which will be here in five years, probably. It is already useful technology. It's based on, on Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency technology. And um, this is a technology that enables us to leave the intermediaries out from many things. Exem for example, payments. We can do payments without banks. We could do payments without PayPal. We could do payments without credit cards from one person to another with blockchain technology. Peer-to-peer -peer services, they are also here uh, in an extensive amount. But, but for example, let's take uh, Finland. It will take about five to seven years probably before we can... <laughs> When before it's it's widely accepted, the technology is already working, but the society is is limiting the adoption of these technologies. Still, but uh, we could go back to Ghana hype cycle, and and it was in was it in here? Yes. There it is. This is a very good uh, thing to see what, where it's going and when they are reaching plateau of productivity. And for example, uh, predictive analytics, speech recognition, they are already uh, there, already being used in business. Location intelligence, Google is as excellent in location intelligence. Uh, biometric authentication methods, we have mobile phones with uh, uh, fingerprint and iris scanners already. Three-dimensional print, 3D printing is probably becoming huge uh, within the next two to five years. Uh, guess to control in-memory virtual reality, fantastic. Cloud computing is already, well, okay, uh, cloud services are, are very productive nowadays, but cloud computing is, is all, uh, on its way. And so on. A lot of new things coming up within the next two to five, less than two years, or maybe even more than 10 years. Quantum computing is still more than 10 years ago, but there's huge leaps, huge developments done within the field basically every day. And, and some people believe that quantum computing is already working in some calculations, but it's still an ongoing discussion. Internet of Things, more than 10 years. I, I think it's, it's maybe shorter because... The Internet of Things sensors are already incredible how much uh, technology you can put in a two euro piece of technology. It's a small chip, but it has all the capabilities of, uh, of a modern computer. It has everything you need and, and it's really cheap and you can put them everywhere because of uh, how cheap they are. <clears throat> Let's see this. How how these uh, big players think? This is this is actually funny uh, because this is from the year 2011. Already five years ago, future traveler five years ago from Saber is. It's funny that it's actually quite a modern travel, quite a good picture of what modern traveler is. Sure, we have tablets. We have software that we can use to search for flights. This is this is uh, Google Flight is exact looks exactly like that. This is, it's funny because this is basically, well, the interface looks a little bit dissimilar, but you, that could be, for example, eBooker's application. Uh, that, that, that would be exactly like that.
mobile phone check in already <laughs> everyday things. That's biometric uh, recognition, fingerprint and, and uh, iris scanner. This is funny. Five, five years ago, I remember the first time we saw this. This looked so great, but basically this is nothing new anymore. And this is four years old. I wonder if that is newer one. No, it's the same. No. Really similar what we uh, looked during the first lessons about um, uh, Cornilla glass, world of glass. We are still seeing relatively little of these large scale touch screens. They are still quite expensive. Uh, but maybe at some point in the future, maybe, maybe we haven't found any real use for them, but they are really present in all these future presentations, which I find funny. You get the point. Very uh, science fiction. -y. There's something that uh, I have written on the topic myself. You can go and, and read it at some point. It's about uh, oh, how I think what will happen with uh, digital tourism from the customer point of view somewhere in the future, in the long line. But if we are looking at all these technologies, and, and how they change our travel is that we are still traveling in a very similar way that we have always been traveling, especially during our holidays and, and such. The basic things are still the same. 
So when will travel and tourism and traveling really be uh, really digitalized? It's, it's a good question. When we think about these um, virtual reality technologies that are developing in very fast pace, it might be that at some point there comes a time when there's no need to travel anymore because you can experience the destination as well as you could when you are there. You can even experience the destination better than what you would experience when you are actually there. There could be virtual reality experiences, visiting Venice, for example, that you could see all the best sites of Venice as if you were there. Uh, with the same detail that would be impossible to separate from from reality with these virtual reality experiences Kind of like holodeck from Star Trek, but you would only probably need your own own virtual reality glasses or some kind of connection to your brain That is uh, when the We start thinking about what does tourism really bring to us. It's a possibility that there's just something so unique in tourism, in meeting other cultures, learning from other people, seeing places, exploring, that the people will want to travel no matter how great a virtual reality experience would be. But there is also a possibility that people want to stay home because it's so easy to be in virtual reality instead of traveling for 10 hours to the other side of the world because Traveling on, on airplanes is not uh, the funniest thing you can do. Maybe the airplanes and transportation will develop in a completely different way. There has been discussion for years and years, decades now, about an airplane that would take you from Helsinki to New York in 12 minutes through the... Uh, do a little space jump and then land, and that would make traveling a completely different experience. Uh, it's, these kind of planes are still on the drawing board, even if they are possible. Then we are, of course, talking about the new frontier of tourism, space tourism, which is actually already a concept, and, and there's huge money involved already in space tourism. It's a really small circle thing to do, at the moment, but of course, technology will get cheaper, and that is what SpaceX is, is trying to do to make it possible for normal people to go to space. Um, there are some physics, laws of physics that uh, are hindering this, these developments, but we will see. It is extremely interesting to be in this field, be in basically any field at this moment and following how fast all these technological developments go and I cannot even uh, try to understand what my life will be in, in 20 years or what your life will be when you are 50. It's, it's uh, impossible. You will see that day uh, most probably and it will be really strange for you when you compare it to, to what the world is today. Um, I, that is, uh, we are still on schedule, we have half an hour. We've started from, from the background of the whole e-business and tourism history and went through all of these uh, lectures and uh, ideas and uh, information and uh, everything. And uh, I think you are, many of you are now quite overwhelmed by everything we went through, but I would like this half an hour at least, there are still about 10 or dozen of you in the chat, just, I, I want everybody just to write at least one thought that you, ha you have on your mind at the moment about the course, about these uh, two days of lectures uh, that you hopefully listened, at least been present in the chat room and, and so on. What kind of ideas have you in mind now about this topic? Um, are there any <laughs> anything on your mind regarding e-business and tourism at the moment? Is there anything you would like to know more? Is there anything about uh, the assignments you would like to ask or anything? Um, we still have about uh, half an hour as, as I said. 
So now is an excellent time. Please, and then I want everybody, every one of you, at least to write at least one sentence to, to chat about what you are thinking in the moment regarding this, this topic and this course. Or do you want to speak? That's uh, why I can't write down. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Yuha comes back to the space flights and that the aircraft itself could fly faster between traditional destinations in the future. And that's definitely what I'm, I was going after that. If, if we have these spaceships capable of doing jumps between destinations through space, then that will make travel times much, much uh, shorter, which would be fantastic. But it's still long, long, long road ahead before, before we get there. But of course, what, what makes everything better is that our materials are developing all the time. We have carbon nanotubes, all these kind of two-dimensional uh, new uh, carbon structures that can be used that are more stronger, more elastic, more durable than any material we have had available before and, and these kind of materials will allow, will allow all new kinds of uh, applications and clothes and devices and the technologies for, for all industries. <laughs> Sophia says that now, right now I wish I was an entrepreneur of some kind to try all the tools we have seen during the lectures. Yes. That's fantastic. That's a fantastic attitude. I really like that. Um, there's, uh, you don't have to be actually an entrepreneur. You can start your own uh, Facebook, public Facebook page, for example. Anybody can start a public Facebook page. And uh, anybody can start a blog. Anybody can uh, start a website. It's not even expensive to have your own website and, and start using this and... Uh, start up your own social media channels. You just have to have a goal what you want to accomplish with all of that. But it's a very, exp uh, very um, interesting and very educational when you are doing all this uh, online marketing, online business stuff. Johannes says that it's been quite informative. I found it interesting how large amount of businesses online is and how all the commercials affect uh, people and about all the development that is still needed in many sites and so although development has been quite impressive for example with google yes and 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 the thing is that as the technology is developing nothing is ever ready i find it really funny that nothing is ever perfect nothing is ever ready nothing is uh fully optimized uh everything can be constantly improved and it's it's a huge challenge also to know which are the things that you should improve the ne improve next yes i could i uh tina wants to hear more about the future of of tourism and it's um something that you you could have a course and and there is for example uh there has been a course in, in Finnish University Net for, for tourism st uh, studies about uh, tourism trends, and it's an uh, yeah, interesting course, but it's not, I think, uh, at the moment organized. Excellent. Suvi has been working with Google Analytics, emailing, SEO, SEM, and so on. So they were all familiar and, and learned everything by herself, which is fantastic. Um, all the terms and theory were introduced, uh, new knowledge from the field of tourism committee and uh, developing faster, pay attention to these matters. Yes, and, and Subi thinks that in the future it will be possible to identify customers shopping online in real time due to big data. And, and it already is. If, if you go to Google Analytics 
and, and see this real-time information, for example, what's going on in Google Commerce, or uh, it's, it's definitely already possible. Yes, and, and Mushashi would like to travel more for seeing what is happening all over the world, not like I have just done being satisfied watching movie or some com commercial in the internet. Yes, there's definitely something more in, in travel and tourism that, that keeps, it, uh, keeps it going for, for a very, very long time. But we have to understand that travel and tourism is actually competing. It's just a form of leisure and people are playing games on their sofa, they are uh, doing all these different kind of activities that the travel and tourism has to stay attractive enough so that people would want to travel instead of just stay home and enjoy their new virtual reality experiences. Yes, and Emma thinks that it's quite a big problem that using the internet in another country costs so much. It definitely is. It's a huge problem when we think about how we can use these technologies in the field of travel and tourism. If the roaming costs were removed, I think that would I think that would increase the attractiveness of the tourism industry in general because we could do so much more with mobile applications, so much more with on-site experiences, improving tourism experiences when we would know that basically everybody can access internet when they are uh, on their trip. And it's also when now that you have taken this course, I, I hope that whenever you are yourself doing uh, travel reservations and planning trips and uh, um, uh, deciding where to go. You would pay attention to all these things that we have just examined. I know it's it, uh, personally whenever I book a trip, I I pay special attention to how everything uh, is in the destination, how I find information, what kind of keywords I use, what kind of advertisements I see, how retargeting advertisements work when I. When I go to TripAdvisor and search for a hotel in Dubai, uh, it is for sure that I will get for the next two months emails from TripAdvisor saying your hotel Dubai in Dubai awaits you, and and so so it's uh, really funny to be aware of all these things that marketers, marketing automation, are constantly doing to try me try to get me to choose their destination and what they are doing well, what they are doing bad. And especially when you are traveling all around the world, you will see various kind of adoptions of technologies in, in the field of uh, travel and tourism. Tina says, uh, interesting question is how to make traveling from place to another more comfortable, entertaining and so on. Yes, uh, if we would have internet with us all the time, also in the airplane, I think that would already <laughs> reduce our travel anxiety a bit because we could we could stay connected the whole trip. We could play games, we could watch movies, we could uh, have travel time as a leisure time. But now, when typically when you are traveling, you have to be offline, which makes it kind of like hard work for modern people to be offline, that they have to figure out what to do when I cannot access the internet. Read books, read newspapers, read magazines, uh, do work, read articles. You have to do something else than what you would prefer to, to do. I, I do hope that at some point the airplanes will all have free Wi-Fi. It was not that long ago that basically seven, eight, nine years ago that you had to be really careful when you selected hotel that not all the hotels had free Wi-Fi available. I was in Lugano about eight, seven years ago, stayed in a hotel and it costs, cost, I think it was like 20 euros a day to use their Wi-Fi connection. And I was like, how, how can this be? Uh, now it's really difficult to find a hotel where there's not the free Wi-Fi available. Maybe at some point in the future we will have also the same kind of situation with airplanes, that it will be difficult to find an air connection when there, when, where there is no Wi-Fi available. It is of course a bit different thing, but it's all about investments because the technology already exists. Yes, Jonna thinks that being offline is sometimes good for people. 
And I think, I also think that the, the, the whole uh, world we are living in, the zeitgeist, is just a fa passing phenomenon. We are really excited about our devices because they are so new. They are constantly developing. Um, there's uh, plenty of things you can do with them. But at some point, I think we will grow bored of all this. Uh, I actually would like to show you a video that I typically ended these courses with. There it is. Mitä jos koko perhe lähtisi huikeaan seikkailuun ja sukeltaisi hauskan elokuvan vie... I have 422 friends, yet I'm lonely. I speak to all of them every day, yet none of them really know me. The problem I have sits in the spaces between, looking into their eyes or at a name on a screen. I took a step back and opened my eyes. I looked around and realized that this media we call social is anything but when we open our computers and it's our doors we shut. All this technology we have, it's just an illusion. Community, companionship, a sense of inclusion. Yet when you step away from this device of delusion, you awaken to see a world of confusion. A world where we're slaves to the technology we mastered. Where information gets sold by some rich, greedy bastard. A world of self-interest, self-image, self-promotion. Where we all share our best bits, but leave out the emotion. We're at our most happy with an experience we share. But is it the same if no one is there? Be there for your friends, and they'll be there too. But no one will be if a group message will do. We edit and exaggerate, crave adulation. We pretend not to notice the social isolation. We put our words into order until our lives are glistening. We don't even know if anyone is listening. Being alone isn't a problem. Let me just emphasize, if you read a book, paint a picture, or do some exercise, you're being productive and present, not reserved and recluse. You're being awake and attentive and putting your time to good use. So when you're in public and you start to feel alone, put your hands behind your head, step away from the phone. You don't need to stare at your menu or at your contact list. Just talk to one another, learn to coexist. I can't stand to hear the silence of a busy commuter train where no one wants to talk through the fear of looking insane. We're becoming unsocial. It no longer satisfies to engage with one another and look into someone's eyes. We're surrounded by children who, since they were born, have watched us living like robots and think it's the norm. It's not very likely you'll make world's greatest dad if you can't entertain a child without using an iPad. When I was a child, I'd never be home. Be out with my friends on our bikes, we would roam. I'd wear holes in my trainers and graze up my knees. We'd build our own clubhouse high up in the trees. Now the park's so quiet, it gives me a chill. See no children outside and the swings hanging still. There's no skipping, no hopscotch, no church and no steeple. We're a generation of idiots, smartphones and dumb people. So look up from your phone, shut down the display. Take in your surroundings, make the most of today. Just one real connection is all it can take to show you the difference that being there can make. Be there in the moment that she gives you the look that you remember forever as when love overtook. The time she first holds your hand or first kiss your lips. The time you first disagree but still love her to bits. The time you don't have to tell hundreds of what you've just done because you want to share this moment with just this one. The time you sell your computer so you can buy a ring for the girl of your dreams who is now the real thing. The time you want to start a family and the moment when you first hold your little girl and get to fall in love again. The time she keeps you up at night and all you want is rest and the time you wipe away the tears as your baby flees the nest. The time your baby girl returns for a boy for you to hold and the time he calls you granddad and makes you feel real old. The time you've taken all you've made just by giving life attention and how you're glad you didn't waste it by looking down at some invention. The time you hold your wife's hand, sit down beside her bed. You tell her that you love her, lay a kiss upon her head. She then whispers to you quietly as her heart gives a final beat that she's lucky she got stopped by that lost boy in the street.
but none of these times ever happened. You never had any of this. When you're too busy looking down, you don't see the chances you miss. So look up from your phone, shut down those displays. We have a finite existence, a set number of days. Don't waste your life getting caught in the net, as when the end comes, nothing's worse than regret. I am guilty too of being part of this machine, this digital world we are heard but not seen, where we type as we talk and we read as we chat, where we spend hours together without making eye contact. So don't give in to a life where you follow the hype, give people your love, don't give them your like. Disconnect from the need to be heard and defined, go out into the world, leave distractions behind. Look up from your phone. Shut down that display. Stop watching this video. Live life the real way. And we are slowly seeing uh, these quiet signals that we might be getting over this time period of technological everyday focus. We are going to have so much eye problems, so many back problems in the future, if this continues. Uh, we are already seeing tourism products that are fully focused on giving you an offline experience. We have hotels where every room is copper lined so that you, you just do not have signal for your mobile phone. Uh, we have um, restaurants that take away your mobile phone when you go there. We have... Um, uh, all these kind of small things that are like setting a balance to everything we do all the time. And I think this is a signal because we, we use those so much and actually we don't need them that much. So there is definitely a gap between uh, what we need and what we need to do and what we do that uh, has to solve itself at some point. Uh, Juha says that uh, uh, he understands it is a business, but as an individual he doesn't like the, uh, the customization process that social media like Facebook or other platforms are using. This system tries to understand who I am as a customer, then they try to focus certain commercials and content to me. I still would like to know what happens outside this bubble that they are trying to show me. And that's, that's an excellent point. And we are living in society where we are only accepting opinions and messages and things that fit our own worldview. We are neglecting huge amount of things. The, our social media feeds, we start to think that they represent the world, what is going on in the world, but they do not. Facebook is only showing us what we want to see. And this is quite important to know. What actually, Facebook is showing us what they think we want to see. And that's a good point. Um, uh, and and uh, definitely, um, the, it's uh, how much power something like Facebook has on our worldview. It's, it's incredible because we are spending our time in these services, these uh, applications, and, and our worldview is formed based on what we see there. So we have to be really careful, and, and Facebook has to be real careful. They really have power. Facebook could, I, I, I argue that Facebook, if they would like to, could change the results to, of the United Presi States presidential election in a way they want. So we have to think if, if that is fair that one company has that kind of power, just based on what they show to their users in various states across the United States. And, and, and the fact that we are only listening to the messages that fit our own worldview really stops us from thinking. And that is really a bad thing for society, that we stop uh, thinking and listening to other people's opinions and finding out their point of view. And this is also holds true for businesses that we have to understand what is going on with our customers. And that, what you have said, is an excellent point, uh, that customers are also changing based on what we show them. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you all for your comments. Excellent. I, I really enjoyed your, your text. I hope you have, would have spoken sooner. These were really good ideas, really good thoughts um, that, that uh, I enjoyed analyzing. Um, yes, and, and Juha also said that he participated in a train trip where travelers were denied the use of any mobile phones or strappers during the trip and have a small talk with other travelers instead. Yeah, um, uh, those kind of tourism products are definitely increasing. Uh, it's part of well-being, wellness that we disconnect from, from technology and that's uh, definitely one way to attract certain group of customers. But for example, uh, that's, that's really strange to see Finnish men on a train trip, train trip where they have to talk with other people. I do not think that Finns were that much more social 100 years ago, for example, than they are today. Um, but in any case, these are good points. Well, thank you all for listening to me these two days. I hope that you have some ideas for your um, uh, assignments. You return them uh, preferably sooner than later. Uh, if you have any questions regarding assignments or lectures or anything, uh, please feel free to use the Moodle messaging board. I will upload these presentations uh, for you, these materials, uh, PowerPoint presentations I have used to Moodle uh, in probably during the weekend. Hopefully I will find time or at the latest, uh, at the beginning of, of next week. And I also hope to have these re uh, videos uh, in YouTube or someplace where you can download them and go back to the best, best part if, if you want or to clarify something if, if you didn't see, see a video or something like that. But thank you all for, for joining this course. Um, thank you Mushasi for <laughs> being here yeah. uh, with me so that I didn't have just to talk to camera or yeah. uh, wall. It's been a pleasure giving these uh, lectures to you all and, and uh, good luck with, with your assignments. Bye.